So now this basically sort of gives us an idea as to how to train a neural network using maybe a stochastic gradient descent like this or a mini batch gradient descent like this. Okay. Now think of a scenario. I mean, this is this basically tells you how to train a neural network, and basically what I mean what essentially we we are trying to implement this particular thing right effectively. Uh, it can be gradient computation. Let's say I have these n data points distributed across multiple agents, and these agents I mean they I mean think of it uh, as if you have your own private data right, and when Google tries and uh, sort of deploys tries to train its global model. It would need inputs from all its users, right? So in that case, uh, your data is going to—I mean, your data is private, so you wouldn't be sharing the data with anyone else. So there won't be a centralized training of this. But then, maybe together, you—I mean, it's possible that all of us would aggregate our gradients together, sum it over, and then send it to Google, and maybe they'll train a centralized neural network. They'll get the new set of weights, and those new set of weights then will be sort of relayed back to us. So there is there are, like in terms of how do we Work with uh, large scale data. So, you can have a centralized architecture, which is also called a parameter server approach. And usually these are trained on, I mean, neural networks are trained on GPUs. Let's say, call it GPU zero, which is like, uh, yeah, centralized server in some sense. And then you have a bunch of other GPUs. So GPU one. So by the way. Servers and workers; these are sort of agents. All these are inter used interchangeably. So, servers you can also call it worker or an agent. So, all these are used interchangeably. So, you'll find based on what text you are referring to. Let's say GPUN. Okay. So you have a parameter server approach, right? So the, what what happens in this particular case? So let's say at the beginning of uh, at the beginning of the uh, first like in the beginning of the training. So first of all, every every agent has got its own private data. So they have their own private data. So let's call it zeta one, zeta two, zeta. So they have their own private data to work with, right? And ideally. What should happen is, so the algorithm that needs to be implemented is WK plus one is WK minus, let's say the M data points, every agent has, or every agent has got NI data points, I should I equal one through n, sorry. Okay, so this is what I mean. Ideally, let, let's say you have all these n times, uh, like basically n one plus n two plus n three, and so on, n n times the data, like basically these many data points, right? And if you had enough memory to store all of it, and if you have enough computation. Then everything can be trained on a single GPU, right? And also assuming that there are no privacy issues, so everything can be trained on a single GPU. But usually we have either privacy concerns, or you have, let's say, limited memory, that it is very difficult to store all the data points at a single place, right? And that's when, when we want to train this neural network, what happens is that the first iteration. This information is basically sort of relate to all the servers. So the current, like at the kth iteration, after the end of kth iteration, uh, the centralized server basically tells every agent that the current weights are WK. Okay. 
Now on this WK, every agent computes this on their own data, this gradient on their own data and then they basically relay this gradient information. So that's, so this gradient is computed. This gradient information is relayed back to the server who just adds all the incoming entries. I mean, instead of storing their gradients separately so that I mean if, if let us say the weight vector is d dimensional instead of working with n times d dimensional vector or storing them separately with every d dimensional vector it receives it just adds a previous one right because of this additive nature of uh, the loss function ok. So, it just adds them once everything is added then it uh, this centralized server it performs uh, this this gradient update or essentially the parameter update which is wk plus 1 is the current estimate wk and the added uh, the all the entries that it has uh, gotten. So, so this gradient information that it has got aggregated gradient information it performs this parameter update and this new value wk plus 1 is then related back relate back to the GPUs and then they compute this loss uh, derivative of the loss function on this new updated value wk plus 1 and this process goes on right. So, this is like a cent like using a centralized server you will still have a distributed training of a neural network, but then we assume an information we assume the presence of a centralized server like this. So, what is the shortcoming of this particular approach? Something that is very evident. Yeah, so one thing is uh, one thing is I mean there is a single point of failure right. If the central server does not like I mean if it stops working then I mean the total communication is broken. So, there is a single point of failure. And what is the communication bandwidth requirement on this centralized server? This is n if there are n servers this is n times d right. So, the communication bandwidth requirement is basically it scales with the number of uh, scales with the number of agents or number of workers right. Communication scales with the number of servers. Right. So, this is this is not a viable architecture a viable setup if you have very large number of agents in the network ok. Because you have a huge communication require bandwidth requirement over here it is it would have been much ideal that if this bandwidth requirement is distributed between the servers and not specific not necessarily towards one particular entity right. The, these are two sort of challenges and in order to uh, account for in order to sort of elevate these challenges. So, you guys know this company Baidu right. Baidu which is Google equivalent in China Baidu. No? You guys know Andrew Wang? So, Andrew Wang in fact uh, for a brief period he had worked at Baidu as well. Uh, anyway, so, so Baidu sort of so I mean it is the name of the company, but they came up with this algorithm called ring all reduce algorithm. So, a particular advantage of this particular algorithm is, so communication bandwidth requirement requirement is constant in the number of agents. which is a significant thing I mean it is then like so the bandwidth requirement is going to be constant in the number of agents. So, no matter how many agents you add in the network uh, 
it's basically that require bandwidth requirement is going to be constant and also there is there is no centralized server okay so this particular algorithm has two steps so just like ADMM you had seen, right? Uh, so this algorithm also has two steps. It has scatter reduce and all gather. This algorithm has two steps. And the way this works is, no, no, let's, let's say to start with, uh, every agent, let's say they have at the kth iteration, at the end of the kth iteration, they have, they know the current weights WK. Okay, let's say this is the case. Now let's just for example, consider you have three agents, three workers. So what every agent does is, so they divide their data set into three parts. And let's call it A0, B0 and C0 for the first agent. Similarly, second agent would divide this as so there are n agents. Essentially, you divide your data set into n n points like this, and then you have a two. Okay, so this is for the second agent and for the third agent. So in the first iteration, so let's see, so how do the iterations of this particular algorithm work? So again, to start with, we have the current set of weights W to K. I mean, there's a K, I mean, there's an outer iteration, which is basically the weights, the K iteration where the weights of the networks are w, like W to K, current set of weights. So idea is to be able to sum all the entries, right? Because that is what we want. We want like the, the if again, if I look at here, we essentially want to be able to sum these entries. So if on this W case, I can on like given the W case, on my data points, I can compute the gradients, but I need to be able to sum this and exchange this eventually. So let's see how this works. So in the first iteration, Let's see the first iteration of scatter reduce. So the first agent relates the first block information on the first block to the second agent. Second in, agent relays the information of the second block to the third agent, and likewise this agent. Okay. And when it relays that information, the incoming information is simply added to the previous entry. So what happens is, after first iteration, what happens? We have is everyone following this? Three different sets of data points. So if there are n n data points, then you basically have n different sets of data points. The first block. Think of it as the first block, second block, third block. If you are n agents, then you have n blocks per agent. So if you, let's say you have uh, four agents and you have fifty data, uh, let's say forty data points. So it will be blocks of ten each. So there will be four such blocks per agent. Okay. So a naught, b naught, and the third entry would be because it, it has it has an incoming entry from C2. So it will be C0 plus C2. Likewise, you have A1 plus A0. Okay. B1 and C1. And similarly, you have A2 b1 plus b2, 
C2. Is this clear? Did they are extending the gradients. All we are trying to get to is the sum of these gradients, right? What do you mean the three those are the this these gradient information, right? On the data points. Is this clear? So this is this is what happens after first iteration. Then you have the second iteration. So in the second iteration, essentially you have this information, then you have so yeah, so you will have this information and what did I miss? This one here. Okay. So it's basically you have moved everything over by uh, one place. So it's the same operation, but you have moved everything over by one place. But what happens after the second iteration is, let's see what are, what are the entries that we have. We have A naught here, we have B naught plus V1 plus B2 and we have C naught plus C2. Similarly, we have A naught plus A1, B1, then you have C naught plus C1 plus C2 and the final iteration we have A naught plus A1 plus A2 for the final agent B1 plus B2 and C2. Now if I look at the three agents, so this is just this by the way after two iterations right. So if I look at the three agents, I have the right piece of information at across different distributed across different agents. So let's say had this been uh, n agents, then you would have uh, those n correct pieces of information distributed across those n agents, right? So since we divide the entire data into n blocks, and this this happens after how many iterations? Two iterations, which is n minus one iterations. So after n minus one iterations we actually have the right set of information, right? Distributed across this, I mean we are not done yet because if every agent, I mean there is no centralized agent, right? So every agent, if they were to be, they were to ensure that their, I mean their WKs are always in sync, then they have to have the entire set of information and not just the one particular block correct piece of information, right? So that when they do WK plus one, everyone independently does WK plus one is WK minus eta times the sum of all the gradients that sum of all the gradients should be known to every agent. In this case, a part of it, one, one part of it is known, one part of it is known and one part of it is known and that information is distributed across different agents as of now. But then how many, uh, like what is the bandwidth requirement? That this is basically constant, right? In the number of, uh, number of agents. We, this bandwidth, the communication bandwidth requirement, the total cost, communication cost is going to be constant. So this is this was the sc scatter reduce step. Let's see what happens in the all gather step. So you, uh, why are we doing that and suppose that you said we have a key number of different data points and then we have divided uh, into n n batches k or n. Then we are further dividing it into n. No, we are not further dividing. It. So k by n are these blocks, right? But so what are these then? A naught, B naught, and C naught. So let's say you have like let's say if the first agent has gotten has has 40 data points like every agent let's say has 40 data points and there are four such agents. So A naught, B naught and C naught are the gradients computed on the first 10. So let's say for the with respect to the. If there are four agents, if there are n agents then you have n such blocks. So everyone has information about WK. Let's say they have they had the information about W naught to start with, the same W naught. Now for them to for the agents to run this, so everyone needs to know, like because it, because now there is no centralized entity, so everyone needs to know the entire sum of like there are 160 data points. Let's say if there are four agents, there are 160 data points. 
So everyone needs to know the gradient or computed on the entire 160 data points so that everyone can run the same equation and get to the same WK plus 1. Because now there is no centralized ent entity that is actually helping with coordinating between the agents, right? As to relaying what WK is. So now they are not actually sharing the WK, but they are just sharing the gradients. The gradients. Okay. So is the scatter reduce part clear to everyone? So now let us move look at the all gather step. So maybe use a new page. Exactly after n minus 1 iterations, not some amount, after 2 iterations. In this case, there were 3 agents, so 3 minus 1, which is 2. After 2 iterations, they, you will have the right set of information, but uh, no, just for one, what do you mean by batch? Uh, because we just have information about V1 plus V1 plus V2 for the first agent, but yeah. we do not have. Yeah, yeah. So, so, just for one particular, let us say this would have been the information about one agent, right? To start with, this was in fact the second agent or let us say th this particular block. So, this B0 plus B1 plus B2 is available, C0 plus, ideally I, I want everyone to know what is A0 plus A1 plus A2, B0 plus B1 plus B2, C0 plus C1 plus C2. Right now, they only know A0, B1, B1, like right now they know these respective blocks, but one agent at a time or so then you have all gather strip. And what happens in all gather? So let's 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 see what is the state after the scatter uh, reduce step. So let me sort of redraw it. A naught C naught plus C two. Okay. So, this is the information, the current state of information after the scatter reduce uh, step, right? Now, in all gather steps, so unlike in scatter reduce step when the incoming information is simply added, in this case, the incoming information is just going to be, I mean, basically, you are going to sort of rewrite your current information with the incoming information. So, what happens is this information is relayed, let us say here in the first iteration. Uh, this information is relayed here and this information is relayed here. So, this is the first iteration of uh, let me, yeah, let me do it over here. I think this is. So, we want this to be rewritten by the incoming information. We want this block to be rewritten by the incoming information. And likewise, this to be re rewritten by the incoming information. This is the first iteration of all gather. So, we are now just gathering the information. Okay. So, after this, after this particular step, what happens? Because we want the current information to be sort of written, right? So, now what would happen after this? Let us see. I mean, I think you will get a better sense once you. So, after this first round, what happens? For the first agent, you have A0 plus A1 plus A2 in place, you have B0 plus B1 plus B2 in place and C0 plus C2 still needs to be uh, updated. Likewise, for the second agent, you have A0 plus A1 here, the second in B0 plus B1 plus B2 and you anyway have C0 plus C1 plus C2, right? And for the third agent, you have A0 
plus a1 plus a2 b1 plus b2 and then you have c0 plus c1 plus c2. So, every agent has gotten two blocks of correct information right after this first round. Then you have the second iteration and in the second iteration what needs to be done? So, this needs to go here, this needs to go here and this needs to go here. After this round every agent has gotten the same amount of same exact same piece of information ok. So, how many iterations did it take n minus 1 iterations here as well. So, in total you have 2 times n minus 1 iterations times k by n which is still constant in the number of agents. So, this is the total amount of information exchange and this is independent of the number of agents. So, the communication bandwidth requirement with this ring all reduce algorithm uh, it is actually independent of the number of agents and if and it does not have a centralized entity either right. So, these are certain examples of uh, I mean something I would not still call it distributed optimization or decentralized optimization because you assume that the every agent starts in the same initial condition w k or w naught right. So, there, there is this difference here and in the next lecture we are going to look at something called decentralized SGD which is essentially very similar to distributed optimization algorithm or the DGD algorithm that we uh, looked at in the previous lecture. So, this algorithm is still not fully decentralized because we assume that to start with every agent has the same at the same w0 right and that is usually not the case. So, in order to ensure that as well you would need a consensus kind of step on top of the gradient dis, gradient descent step ok. So, is this clear? So, I'll, yeah. Hmm. n minus 1 right for both for both of them it will be n minus 1. So, it will be then followed by uh, yeah. So, so no wait. So, f at so you have a you have an outer iteration which is like the kth iteration of the updating the weights. So, you let us say after the end of k iterations you have the current set of weights w k. Right now your focus is just to be able to compute this sum that is what you are trying to get at right you are trying to compute this particular sum in order, you know and in order to compute that sum you run one round of scatter already scatter already basically ring all reduce algorithm. So, if there are n agents so there will be n minus 1 iterations of scatter reduce and n minus 1 iterations of all gather and after that you would be able to compute that sum every agent would be able to compute that sum independently and then they would be able to update the weights independently, but it will be the same weights w k. So, this would basically conclude the k plus 1 nth iteration of the uh, w k plus 1 algorithm. So, now if you look at it uh, while you have I mean this algorithm is attractive in the sense that the communication bandwidth requirement is much smaller. The time it takes to train neural network because you have multiple iterations of ring all reduce involved right compared to this parameter server approach they are they are definitely larger right. You have uh, 2 times n minus 1 iterations which is not the case over here. So, that is that is one one difference uh, I mean one particular advantage of parameter server approach, but then again in parameter server I mean there are other disadvantages like you assume a huge communication bandwidth uh, requirement for the centralized server right. So, that is completely uh, sort of elevated here. You can yeah I mean you can start with yeah yeah so so in this case I mean the reason we do that is because I mean you know that this is the correct piece of block and you don't want this to be written right so so it really I mean it really sort of depends on how you I mean how you have set it up so. The point is how I mean as long as you start correctly you just have to move over by one place and you can keep doing this in a round robin fashion. If there are 4 agents then you have to do it like 3 iterations and you have to do it in a round robin fashion. Just to make sure the start is correct. Yeah as long as the start is correct you just keep, keep shifting by one unit to the left. Same with the scatter right like scatter reduce uh, you have started here you then shifted by one unit to the left. So, is this algorithm clear? So, I will conclude today's lecture with the with the result on some on gradient descent in general or the stochastic gradient descent. 
and this would be useful in the next lecture when we are going to look at something called decentralized SGD. So, so far we have been uh, in the context of developing algorithms, we have been looking at ways, we have like particularly in the context of distributed optimization. So, what did we look at? We looked at uh, we looked at algorithms which involve which are first order versus second order. We looked at uh, maybe a fixed time variant of it or some like, so there are other I mean, so there are these ways to accelerate the optimization process. But one thing which we have not looked at so far is the role of the topology right. So, one uh, what, I mean first of all we know that I mean the graph diameter is going to play an important role because it tells you how quickly you are going to reach the consensus. So, the role of the topology is also important in terms of uh, dictating how quickly you can converge right. So, if we were to choose uh, the gra underlying graph topology, what is an optimal choice of graph topology right. So, it it is certainly not a line graph because it takes a lot of I mean it, if the graph diameter is going to be d mi n minus 1 and it would take that much amount of uh, steps for the information to propagate from one end to another right. It cannot be star graph because star graph while the step propagation uh, information propagation happens in two steps from any node to any other node. The communication bandwidth requirement on the centralized on the, on the star node that is going to be significantly large right it is it is n minus 1. So, when you if you want to have a nice trade off between communication requirement as well as how much uh, how quickly the information flow should happen from one uh, one node to another. So, if you want to have this nice trade off what is the optimal topology to work with while this still remains an open question. But there exists a topology that beats all common topology topologies that we know and that is called static exponential graphs. So, this is something that we are going to look at in the subsequent lectures, but I will like end today's uh, lecture with the simple uh, result on gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent. So, under the assumptions. that the loss function using capital F here is L smooth in terms of the in terms of W and the second, second assumption is because we are talking about stochastic gradient descent. So, the stochastic gradient or the so, when we used a few data points to get an estimate of the gradient, we call it a stochastic gradient right because it is not the true estimate of the gradient it is just a. So, it is unbiased, so it is an unbiased estimate and has bounded variance. So, you choose a different set of points you will get one variance right like of the gradient you choose another set of points you will get another variance and so on. So, this has bounded variance sigma square. So, what do we mean by unbiased estimate? So, unbiased estimate estimator is like let us say if I am computing. So, if I want to compute the expectation of the gradient expectation with respect to how the data points are distributed or not distributed, but let us say data points that are sampled right. So, I mean this is still talking about centralized case. So, this is same as so the same as the gradient of uh, ok. So, then we say it is an unbiased estimator. So, the result says then if these two assumptions are satisfied then uh, and if you use a step size of the order let us say 1 is the square root of t uh, then you have 1 over t summation is running some of the uh, running average of the gradient norms. So, that is going to be order sigma over square root of t. So, as t becomes larger and larger eventually uh, you I mean you have order 1 over square root of t kind of convergence, but it also depends on the variance data variance. So, in the number of iterations that is going to require if the variance is large then obviously you are going to require larger larger number of iterations. So, this is 
by the way what is this little little f is this particular quantity so this is your f so the average of this is your f so this so this is the result on uh, stochastic gradient descent and in the next lecture we are going to look at decentralized uh, gradient descent or decentralized stochastic gradient descent where results like these would be useful in at least uh, I mean we are, we are not going to look at the proof of uh, why static exponential graphs are better or the or worse but then we are going to make use of these results to, to basically analyze these algorithms. So any questions on today's lecture? Okay, so when does stochastic gradient descent works? Right, so we assume that the loss function is L smooth. I mean, first of all, when we talk about gradient descent or any algorithm for that matter, A, either you, if you want to provide global guarantees, then you would have to assume that the function is convex. If the function is non-convex, then the guarantees are only going to be local. So there are no guarantees to con of convergence to global minima. So I haven't mentioned that F is convex or not convex. So I mean, even, even if it's non-convex, the convergence guarantees that we are going to have is essentially local convergence guarantee. So we assume that the loss function is L smooth in terms of the weights W, right? Like let's say you choose a mean square loss or cross entropy loss. So whatever loss you end up choosing, it's going to be L smooth in, uh, in, in the weights of the neural network. The other result is stochastic gradient is unbiased. So this is your stochastic gradient, right? And it's an unbiased estimator. So I can expected value of the gradient, you can write it in terms of the gradient of the expected value. And the expected value of the function is what I call uh, as little f. So if this stochastic gradient is unbiased and the variance is bounded by some sigma square, then this is the convergence kind of rate that we get. And as number of iterations capital T becomes very large, that's when you have, I mean, this expectation basically starts, the average of this expectation starts becoming almost close to zero. But it scales, uh, it's, it also scales with the number with the variance or with the standard deviation right so if the variance is very large i mean it, it can still be bounded but if it's very large then it would also require larger number of iterations so these are the number of like i mean this is the uh, so when what do we mean by number of iterations required so essentially when if you want to say the number of i mean if you want to get epsilon close then the number of iterations required are essentially sigma over square root of t is essentially going to be your epsilon right this is for a centralized case. There is no distributed or decentralized part as yet. In the next lecture, we will uh, look at the end of how the role of the topology plays a role. Uh, I mean, the topology plays a role or uh, in fact, the graph diameters and certain parameters would also be important in that case. So that's what we are going to look at. Okay, so much of today's lecture was largely about large scale machine learning. And this basically gives you an idea I mean, that's where these stochastic gradient descent are mostly used. So the algorithms, the parameter server approach or the ring all reduce, the, uh, they are relevant mostly in the context of large scale machine learning. If you have very few parameters, then you won't even need uh, this kind of fancy information exchange. And if you have like multiple servers uh, and such certain bandwidth requirement on those, but then uh, this stochastic gradient descent is, is true for any, any, any setup. I mean, right now we are not looking at particularly a decentralized or uh, setup in this case. Uh, that would be the topic for the subsequent lectures.